Hello, dear friends, and welcome back to the Gondorian Mass campaign. This is Atan Varnothir Kuitl, and today we are going to defend Western Osgrit from Captain Shaknak. He's got a lot of works, a very strong army. So, last time we defended Henneth Anun uh, successfully twice, which is a really good start on this campaign. Now we want to retrain the troops. Um, because we lost some men last time. Uh, actually, we want to retrain this militia too. Um, and now we want to spend uh, the rest of um, the money. So we can start at Karsas. You remember our plan was to simply spend a lot of money on farms to get that long growth going. Um, and thanks for a lot of good feedback uh, from the last episode. Um, Elite Dwarf came up with a suggestion that I move um, through um, different cities with this button which is very useful it's much faster um, so now we can go to Fanulon for example we'll build more communal farming Brethil we are going to let's see if we actually we have a lot of money uh, in spare so we can just spend them on mines that isn't that bad. Yeah, let's see. I think, yeah, we're building stuff everywhere. So now uh, we want to prepare for this attack from Shaknak. And the plan is to bring reinforcement troops from all the places I can. Let's see. Yeah, we can only use this guy. And then we have Captain General Bormir of the White Tower. We'll bring you with him some Lebanon mar Marines. And this is going to be a really strong reinforcement army yeah we can also take the Gondor militia from Karasas uh, yeah we're still making we're still making some money over here and the population is not too angry so I think this is going to I think they're going to attack Western Oskill this turn so yeah let's take a look so I'm actually really excited to start this um, series um, we have achieved like 80 views on the first video already, which is, I am uh, pretty happy for. So yeah, Captain Shaknak is now attacking and we got like 1,400 troops, which is quite good. I think we're going to to win this battle quite easily. Um, so this is going to be exciting. So, what do you guys uh, think about the length of the videos? I believe that 45 minutes is a pretty good length. But um, if anyone wants um, shorter or longer um, episode, just tell me. Okay, so what we want to do on this battle map is to defend the bridge. It's very similar to the um, map at Henneth Annan, to be honest. It's like you're just defending this one choke point. So the plan is simply to put all of these guys um, just defend the bridge. We're going to defend the bridge. Just make a like a space that the troops can go into, and then they'll get um, attacked from all different sides. So we see the Uruks are at a different side. So I think we actually can walk our troops over. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Take off these two Lebanon Marines. I'm looking forward to using them. And Bormir, of course, who got um, the Wardens of the White Tower, a really strong unit. Which we are going to use to our full potential, actually. Uh, so now we're just waiting for the troops to, to get over. And I don't know what Mother is doing. I think they're going to march into the city. Uh, they might actually be confused because of the reinforcements, but I believe they're going to to come when all of our army is uh, gathered. So we just have to do time six right now and simply just wait. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm actually going to come back when all the armies are set up. So, um, I'll be right back. So, welcome back guys. We see that the Orc Archers are now approaching. 
and we actually want to spend some ammo at them even though some might argue that it's a waste because all the orcs are going to blow up on on this uh, bridge but um, we actually want to get rid of some of their archers before they get their fully potential out so we're only hitting a lot of them so the reason that I put my Lebanon Marines behind this wall is because um, the enemy archers will often focus their ammo on uh, javelin units and in this case we really want to spare our Lebanon Marines because we're going to be very very useful when this blob comes over so that's the reason I'm I'm sp sparing them a bit so we could actually speed up this process uh, so I'm going to put all of these um, melee units in into guard mode and I want to put these guys a little bit back um, you know troops in shield formation might often uh, use some they might move forward because of the mass so they're actually getting some kills with these archers because we have blown up our troops but um, they only have one arch unit and they're losing a lot of men so soon we are going to hit these guys really hard so like now I actually want to start I think we're going to move them over here and these guys over here and then we're going to hit them really hard and we want to send in the Lebanon Marines behind here we're going to give them some pretty good wallets guys Okay, so now we want to start hitting these guys. And the main unit that we want to hit is the Uruk Halberds because they're really susceptible to arrows. Uh, let's see, yeah, they're a bit behind. But it doesn't really matter who we hit, to be honest, because we're getting a lot of kills anyways. But yeah, this is going to be our main priority. Uh, the Uruk Halberds. Alright. So now the battle has begun. Hopefully I want to have casualties less than 20%. That's That would be a really good um, battle to be honest. So just holding um, Western Oskillet and just defending against the East is often a very good tactic to get a lot of potential out of your units. Okay, now we're getting some good hits here. See, they really blob up. So now I think I'm going to give them some a volley. So let's look. We have killed 8%. Let's see how much these um, javelin units are going to give us. Mm. Yeah, it looks like only a bit of them are throwing, so I want to move them to a better spot. But the javelin units are really OP against armored units like the Urks. So we are really going to get a lot of kills. It looks like the Orc General is already dead, which is really good. Uh, we might get a lot of routing troops. Yeah, Captain Shaknak, his head is under our feet now. So you really want to train the Lebanon Marines when you can. But they're really susceptible to arrows, as you see. Oh yeah, look at this. Ah, oh, you you simply can't miss on those shots. But these orc archers, I think we want to target them with this unit, actually. Oh, now they're actually routing, and it looks like they're going to route into our units, I believe. Actually, we want to use the um, Boromir's um, ability, which gives better combat effectiveness. From such tidings does victory emerge. Okay, now hit them in the back. Actually, we want to hit these routing troops too. We don't want them to leave. Oh yeah, look at that. So beautiful. These orcs are getting melted. So we want to be a bit careful. Or actually, we could hit these guys. Just to make them route too. So we got a lot of ammo, and now we're going to hit the halberds. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah, this is a very beautiful battle. The only guys left are the archers and some of these halberds. We got 
a bit better morale. But they're really going to get melted now because we're surrounding them on every side. You see, we are Bormir in his glory. I don't think we can find Bormir though. But his unit, the Wardens of the White Tower, really strong unit. A late, very good late game unit for Gondor. The, these Orc archers are really hitting our um, Lebanon Marines though. You can see we already lost like 40 men. So, the, the dumb decision I did is to place them this way because then they get less shield armor. Yeah, we might want to pull them back. Just hit these archers, please. Now I actually think we're going to put everyone out of guard mode and simply just attack everyone in the middle. Yeah, they're going to route and they're going to route into us. This is really good. Now we lost a lot of Lebanon Marines, which is not that good, but um, it doesn't really matter. We we lost like 11% and we're simply just massacring their units. And this is their strongest units now because the mortars start with a lot of stronger units which they will not get for a while unless that uh, when we take Minas Morgul and Skirit Ongol because then they get some doom stacks but this is really useful we have now routed the best of Mordor's units they're actually putting up a stand over here they are returning uh, let's let's bring the arches with us so a lot of the troops are coming back, um, but yeah, we're going to simply walk over them. So now I want to send Bormi in the front actually. Yeah, we can speed up a bit. Simply attack these guys. Yeah, they're routing again. They're just coming back and... You know, this is weird. The AI is weird. Now we actually might get some casualties. Let's send Bormir into this. Yeah, a lot of the troops are just out. Now we won. All of the troops are routed. We lost like 13%, which is... It's really optimal. The battle could simply not have been any better. Except for the losses on our Lebanon Marines. Uh, but yeah, you know, this is really good. I think we might actually catch some more units. But it doesn't really matter. These, t these troops aren't going to return. Because the unit size is less than uh, 30. So let's just quit the battle there. And we lost 260 and killed 1,552. Really good, really good. Here, this um, this uh, picture is actually a depiction of Boromir fighting the Eureka at the skirmish of Amon Hen, I believe. Yeah, Boromir is one of my favorite characters in the Lord of the Rings. Really like, yeah. He is really possessed of the Rings' power, but in the end, he's um. He's saving Merry and Pippin, or at least fighting for them, uh, which make um, which makes him uh, yeah, even. Okay, so they're attacking Henneth Anun again, which is uh, a bit boring, you know, watching the same battle once again and again. They're reinforcing Eastern North Gilead, and they're actually going onto the bridge, which is really good. This means we actually could take out um, their entire army while um, um, and also we could obtain Eastern Skillet while attacking Captain Gilitak. So yeah, have returned the troops. In Minas Tirith we have built the communal farming. Yeah, we're, we're still making 7,000. This is really good. So Gilitak is only an orc archer. And they only got 
three units here. So now we can actually take Isuna's skillet, which I'm will be very useful. We are also going I'm to take out that. Lengash. Uh, but, le uh, but first, let's spend some money. So actually, now I want to... I actually think I want to build the Fiefland Barracks just so that you guys can see some more units. But if you want to focus on economy, I would actually build the crop rotation. Now we can take higher tax. Yeah, it's not worth it. Uh, or actually, I'm going to take higher tax rate. Now we get like 200 more a turn. So then you see how powerful the communal farming are. And when you upgrade it more, it's going to be even more powerful. So let's see. Yeah, okay, now I, I need to do the new strategy, which Elite Dwarf learned me. Okay, so at Western Skillet, we're going to build the, the communal farming. So in Tarnos, we're going to build communal farming as well. And that's it, I believe. All right, so... Now we are going to see the battle for Eastern Skillet, or the bridge of the Skillet, and then we're going to, if we win this battle, we're going to obtain this bridge. So now let's just be very aggressive. So you see, they're going to get some reinforcements, but they're simply going to die. We outnumber them so heavily. So I'm just going to save here just in case. All right. So, we're probably already obtaining Eastern Skillet, uh, which the reason I'm doing it is because we can use the fort in Ithilien for more troops, which will uh, make it even more easy to defend. Sometimes it might not be worth to hold Eastern Skillet, so we'll actually see if we are going to hold it for a long time or just momentarily. Um, because of this bridge, you know. Yeah, the deployment is a bit weird. Let's see. There, there, and there. So they actually got um, a pretty good army, but it doesn't really matter because we're outnumbering them so heavily. Like, I actually believe that Boromir himself could take taken out all of these troops, or his unit. Um, but yeah. Okay, so now let's just speed up. We're just going to send in the archers and take care of this small archer battalion. Yeah, you know what, just hit him now. We're not really getting a lot of them. Let's move a bit closer. And we can actually speed up, yeah. Let's just bring them all in here. We're going to use the Lebanon Marines to flank. Okay, now hit the Orgaches. Okay, this is great. I don't know what they're doing, they're just the enemy stuck. Are they have lost half their men. Okay, but now the... Oh yeah, here you are. The real orc archers come. So let's hit them instead. Now let's use Boromir to actually hit these guys. Um, and we want to send in... Yeah, actually we want to retreat these archers a little bit. Because the Morgul Chosen are now coming for our arches, which is not really good. Um, this was not... Yeah, okay. This was not really good. This was a poor decision. I thought the Morgul Chosen was going to be a bit slower. But now we're going to hit them in the side with our Lebanon Marines. Which is fortunate. But the Boromir is going to hold a good stand over here. So now let's send in Spearmen. Yeah, let's use the shield wall just to push through with mass and let's push these 
Militia 32. Now hit the Morgul Chosen in the rear. Yeah, this is really good actually. So yeah, this. We didn't want Levin and Marines to be involved in melee, but um, the Morgul Chosen are getting melted really fast now. Yurk Bardegard is also in battle. So what you see here, like troops just flying up, is because we got um, we got um, very much mass with these shield walls. So they can be very useful sometimes. Now we don't want to fire I believe. We should rather hit these arches. Yeah, these Morgul Chosen are just getting melted. I, thi I think we can speed up the battle. Or we should just head up over here. Just hit the arches. Only half yeah, the Morgul Chosen are already remains. dead. Now let's just hit the arches with everything. I believe there's a Uruk bodyguard here somewhere. Oh yeah, he's over here. So let's send Boromir over there, actually. Also, we can send the Lebanon Marines over here. We're going to flank with these archers. We can hit these guys first, actually. Simply... Oh my god, come on! Hit these guys. So your bodyguard is... Yeah, hit these guys. Come on, Bormir, take that. No! Okay, this is really annoying. Yeah. It's a really stupid battle, to be honest. But uh, we're going to get into larger, larger battles after a while, which is uh, more fun to watch too. When we're entering Mordor, we're going to meet like giant armies with Olog highs. And that's going to be really fun. Uh, what? Oh. Okay, just hit these in the back, please. We might get some friendly fire here now. Yeah, some some of these Lebanon Marines are, stu are stuck in the battle, so they can't fire. And this chase is really st stupid. Yeah, let's just get into this guys. Behold how our cowardly foe runs. It's time. Okay, there the orc general goes. For I think that was Giri Tag. Okay. Yeah, this battle is just really weird. Do you see how the AI is acting? It's yeah, there you go. Urk bodyguard goes. Now let's just send every unit as at, the, at these orc arches. Our army is tiring. So yeah, this army is really weird. Let's just get them all out of here. Into these guys. So I actually think I'm going to play the Hanathan battle. While you're not watching, I'm just going to play it and then continue. Because watching the same battle over and over again is not really that fun. My god, look at this. Behold how our cowardly foe runs. It's time yeah, this is really attack. weird. So actually, if they escape with more than, they might actually escape to us Eastern Oskillet. We might this not get it now. Victory. Actually, they might get a small unit of forty-three into Eastern Oskillet. Let's see. So this battle is uh, the Battle of the Five Armies, I believe. I think it's a really epic image. Yeah, the eagles are arriving, helping out. So 
let's see if they get a unit in each of split. No, actually, we can just take it now. So, Vormir, you have the honor. There we go. Uskileth reclaimed. Beautiful. This extended edition clip is really epic. All right. Our realm is expanded. So we actually need to. I'm not going to repair this just yet. I I'm not sure if I want to hold this. I'm going to move Bormir into this fort. Uh, we might need a governor over there, actually, because I'm pouring off the keys. Yeah, if we just do it like this, it's going to be okay, actually. He he's getting free upkeep. Mm, now we want to merge some armies over here. So actually, you don't want to do what I did there because you lose the armor. So sometimes you don't want to merge units. So let's see. Yeah, this fort will be useful. We don't want to take Ostithil just yet. We want the Wargs of Khan to take out the garrison. So we don't want so we don't need to lose units on that. I'm actually tempted to push towards Minas Morgul already. Approaching quietly. Let's see. Yeah, they haven't got a lot of units over here. Yeah, they're actually really far behind. We could push now. But you know what? I'm just simply going to build up more economy. We'll see what happens if Mother bring more units. Yeah, they're on their way. For now, I'm simply just going to focus on the economy. So, we want to move some units now. Let's see, it's space for one more, right? Yeah, we got this one too. All right, so let's move the arches up here. Yes. Two units over there. These two. Let's see, yeah, we can send these two over here and retrain them. And I actually want to recruit some Fountain Guard next turn. See them in action. Alright, so now we want to attack Longash. I'm simply just going to do that off camera so you don't have to watch the Henneth Anun skirmish every single episode. So I'll be right back when I've won that battle. So welcome back guys. We are now defeating the rest of their army. It really wasn't that big of a big deal. It looks like we didn't actually get the general. Yeah, we're not going to catch him. So we lost 77, gave 710, quickly good battle, no major losses, just on the Gondor Militia. This is Arwen, daughter of Elrond, in her majestic, majestic beauty. Oh yeah, this was also a tip that the uh, lead dwarf told me to left click this ring to speed it up. Alright. We have vanquished the enemy. So now we want to we move these guys back Archmen. and simply just retrain the militia and these archers. And actually we want to Maintain order. Yeah, Awaiting if we move him over here and we move these guys over here. So wish. if we lose these in your skillet we doesn't lose here enough the keys. Alright. Now let's see. Awaiting your command. Yeah, I think we can end the turn over right there. So let's see. So soon we want to start thinking about Enedwyth in the west. They might come sooner or later and we want to be prepared. I haven't really prepared much over there. So it looks like Mordor is making up another army. 
Okay, we're not going to take any generals. That's also a rule that I forgot. We're not going to take anyone. All right. So we're training. Okay, so now in Kalnhad we have uh, produced the really good mine, which gives us 550 per turn. Really nice. We got some land clearance going. So yeah, we're making 10,000 at turn now. Really, really sweet. Um, we are going to build some more communal farming over here. So let's see, in Seveland we can now take higher tax rate. No, actually we want to wait until we got chicken farming. So we're going to build some chicken farming. Yeah, we, our economy is really stable now. So we want to make some land clearance over here. And that I believe, yeah, that was all. So now we have a lot of rest money. So now I'm going to recruit the Fountain God, Gondor's Pride. And I'm actually thinking about some cavalry militia just to um, catch up those units um, who are slipping away. So I like can take out the... Um, the, um, uh, the retreating units. All right, we can actually build something here. I'm actually going to repair this. And we might want to invest. Mm. We can build some communal farming. All right. So there's still only two units over here and two over here. And we're just selling trash, to be honest. But we're still just going to take, take it a bit defensive. Simply because we want this growth to just continue for a while um, perhaps now yeah now we use all the money actually but we can start recruiting some units over here just to fill up the forts and such so we are a bit better prepared all right so yeah let's take another turn Yeah, so now they're probably sending them over to Henneth Anun. What I'm really hoping for is that some of their units is just standing outside Minas Morgul so that the Witch King is going to sally out and that we don't have to take out um, their um, garrison because Minas Morgul gets a huge garrison. So now we a lot of construction done. The Orcs of the Misty Mountains and the Dun Landings have allied. Alright, let's take a look. So in Long Gal, we can now put higher tax rate, which is giving, going to give us a little bit of more money. Now we want to start building the crop rotation. Over in Kalembel, we can also take higher tax rate, but it's going to stagnate the growth, so we're just going to wait a little bit more. We're going to build a chicken farming. And over in Ethering, yeah, this far this mine is really good actually. So we actually might want to not buy this now and spend it on this mining network, which is going to give us a lot of more money. Yeah, it's really much. It's really worth it. So now let's take a look. Yeah, these guys are probably coming. But there are no major threats. Um, yeah, we're going to be able to defend this area pretty easily. But I'm actually thinking about sending some units to the independent fort. Let's see, we could send Bordir over there. Actually, we can put Guren over here. And then move Bordir over here. And this arch unit will not get free upkeep over here. Let's move these two over here. And move Archmitcher down here. Retrain them. Yeah, and we're going to get the Fountain Guard and the Gondor Cavalry militia over here. 
So now we're simply just getting more troops in this area to defend. Like we can, all these troops also have access down to Eastern Skillet, so we have a lot of troops we can simply easily defend. Uh, and I actually want to recruit two more units up here, simply to get some more units in the fort to utilize them. But um, we'll have to wait for a turn because we got no money just now. Mm, actually, we want to get, we want to use Falong because he got the Lusnak Axeman. So I'm going to send him up next turn, I believe. Actually, we can just send him up now. Just going to put him over here. So that will be another turn. So we're really making a lot of money now. And okay, so someone is hiding in the woods beside Henneth Anun, so we want to make we want them be aware of that. I think they're going to try to ambush someone. But we know they're there. Moria under siege. Alright, so let's see. They should be up here. Yeah. Ogler is just hiding with some units. So now we got the cavalry militia. Anulon and Karandros has built some more farming. And now let's put Forlon up into this fort. And yeah, now we want to start building more stuff again. So in Car Andros, we want to build a crop rotation. In Anuland, we also want, we might want, let's look at the building browser to check this. Is there any requirements? Yeah, I think we can just build it actually. But where is it? All right, there, there is something I'm missing, which I don't remember on the top of my head. Um, okay, so if any in the comment section remember what I have to do now. Um, oh yeah, or never mind. I already have it. I need a larger city to build more, so I'll just build the communal and um, the chicken farming. Uh, just uh, don't mind that. Uh, let's look. Here we're going to build a crop rotation, yes. Yeah. Actually, we want to wait with the crop rotation. Now we want to spend some money on troops over here. So let's look. We were going to, yeah, now we're going to need two more troops. Or actually, we're getting one from Minas Tirith. So we can, we'll just wait for the Gondor's Spearmen, so we'll just build more stuff here. Alright, let's um, take another turn. So we're really just playing defensive, just building up our economy. It's, it's going to make the middle game a lot more easy. Okay, they're making a, a pretty good army over there. A huge stack. So I think they're trying to bribe us, but of course the bribe doesn't work in this patch. Yeah, they're just stuck at Fanuland trying to bribe us. Right. Yeah, we got more construction, just the usual stuff, you know. And now we got the Fountain Guard. This is beautiful. We're going to send the Arch Militia up here. And this cavalry can reach pretty much anywhere. Yeah, this unit is just trash. Oh, glory, yeah. It's just a trash unit. So let's look over here. They are actually coming up with more armies. Mm. Yeah, and we were going to train some more. We're going to train the infantry. And let's just build more stuff once again. That's what the other phase is just about, just building stuff for all the money you got. So in Fanyoland, 
we can take even yeah then the people are going to be mad so we don't want that then we actually want some more public order we could build that but I'm going to go for the grain exchange that's another building which is also very useful uh, gives a lot of growth very fast in Kalnhad I'm just I'm simply going to build the meeting hall just to get one more unit over there and in or in Pelagir going to build more crop rotation yeah you see the the benefits from raising the taxes you know chicken farming over here yeah we actually want to get some more public order in some of these places to make the communal farming useful all right so let's take one more end turn and that will be the last turn i believe for now we got one more yeah all right So I think the next episode we want to take Minas Morgul. Because we can now be offensive. Yeah, you see that unit? Oh yeah, okay, it moved back, but... I'm just hoping for one unit to stand in front of Minas Morgul to get the garrison to, uh, to move out. It's really a turtling strategy. Now this reclaims a region. Just a lot of good trades. Okay, so more stuff built. So this is the last turn. Yeah. Okay, let's see. So now's the point where we're going to start having a lot of money in our inventory because um, we're simply building everywhere and we still get a lot of money. Over here, we're going to build mines because we built all the communal farming that's available and here in Brethil we are simply we can actually start making some ballistas and catapults just for the offensive because um, most of this is not useful for us right now yeah you see, now we build, we're building stuff everywhere and we still have 3,000 that we can spend. Um, really showing the potential. So, we're going to start making some more units just to move out to the fort. To just have a lot of units available when we need it. Now, I also believe that we can start moving Dwayne here. We are going to move him to the west front. Let us set up camp here. So, yeah, we're making like 12,000 a turn. Really good start on, the, uh, on this campaign. And that will be all for today. So I hope you enjoyed, even though there was a lot of just building. Uh, we're soon going to attack Minas Morgul. And I'm looking to get those Minas Ethil Guardians, one of my favorite units. So we might see some action from the Phantom Guard also next turn, next time. So that's going to be exciting. So yeah, that will be all for today. Thank you for watching. Um, leave some feedback. And see you guys next time.